اقرارا به وتوحيدا واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما مزيدا اما بعد so we continue باذن الله تعالى with the manhaj al haq poetry by the allama imam sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala regarding the correct methodology as it relates to aqida and etiquettes and manners yesterday we mentioned and we studied together rather that uh man said rahimahullah ta'ala he authored this uh, poetry what was his age roughly when he authored this these lines of poetry he was in his early 30s he was in the first uh three barakallahu uh, fikum decades of his life when he authored this um, line of poetry and he began by making dua and encouraging the <clears throat> the reader and the student to be sincere seeking the haq seeking the truth from that which is going to come by which of aqeedah creed affairs that every muslim must believe in and then he mentioned lines of poetry as it relates to the three categories of a tawhid and then he focused on which category did he focus on after he mentioned them those three categories of tawhid which category, category does he focus on now <clears throat> al asma sifat he went into details regarding some of the names and attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from them he mentioned as samad as samad sahola aina as samad so what's the meaning of as samad kullullah ahad allahu samad what's the meaning of as samad no hmm? number 1 the one that is free from needs correct aina number 2 alladhi la jawfu la la yashrabu la yaqu the one that doesn't need to eat or drink or need sustenance now next hmm he doesn't beget and nor is he begotten jamil and finally yeah he's not in the need of the creation all of the creation are in need of him so which uh uh adian religions can you say that this name of a samad refutes the christians how hmm lam yurid lam yulad and also allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the quran he mentions the refutation against them for worshiping whom isa ibn maryam and his mom what was the verse he's saying kana yaakulani at'am they didn't have samadiyah they didn't have samadiyah kana yaakulani at'am that they used to eat and drink so they do not deserve to be worshiped allah is a samad who does not need that he's free from that subhanahu wa ta'ala then we mentioned uh, al basir al samir we mentioned al wadud and various other names of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today we're going to focus on line number 15 from line number 15 to which line 15 to 26 15 to 26 before isha so be nilay ta'ala we we'll have some time and have a break and then we'll continue from 26 onwards after salat al isha fadal al mulk lahu al mulk Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man ittaba'a hudahu amma ba'd <coughs> Yaqulu shaykh al-allama Abdul Rahman ibn Nasir al-Sa'di rahimahullahu ta'ala fi manzumatihi manhaj al-haq qal lahu al-mulk wa alhamdu al-muhit bi mulkihi wa hikmatuhu al-'uzma biha al-khalq tashhadu Ainam Zakallah For him is the dominion and all praise and he is all encompassing his dominion and his tremendous wisdom his creation attest to Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillah we move on now to uh, the next uh, sifa or that he mentions the Imam rahimahullah ta'ala and that is sifatul mulk wal hamd sifatul mulk wal hamd sifatul mulk 
Alhamd, mulk meaning that he subhanahu wa ta'ala, that which belongs to him is all the dominions. He's the possessor of all things, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's al Malik, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is specifically for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yatasarrafu fi jami'i makhluqatihi bil ijadi wal imata. So we believe through these, this name, al Malik, and the mulk that is for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he disposes of the affairs of all of his creation by way of existence, giving them life, and imata, taking their life. Yuhi, where you meet. He's the one that gives life, and he's the one who takes life. Yani, he's the one that gives health. marad, and from his wisdom, illnesses. risk, faqar. He's the one who provides, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he's the one who is decreed that one would be destitute. Wabil aman wabil khawf. He's the one who gives security and fear. Ila ghayri dhalaka mimma yajri ala al-makhluqat al ikhtilafi asnafiha. And other than those affairs that the creation go through from their various levels, aynam, and categories. He is, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the possessor of all dominions. Qulillahumma malik al-mulk, tu'ti al-mulk man tasha. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Ali Imran, verse number 26 or 7, I think, Ali Imran, where he says, Qulillahumma malik al-mulk. Say, O oh Allah, the owner, the one that is, has superiority of all dominions, tu'ti al-mulk man tasha. And you give from your dominions to whom you will. وَتَنْزِعُ الْمُلْكَ مِمَّنْ تَشَاء And you take from whom you will. وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاء You will give nobility and honor to whom you will. وَتَذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاء Humiliate and bring down whom you will. بِيَدِكَ الْخَيْرِ إِنَّكَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ بِيَدِكَ الْخَيْرِ in your hand is that which is good, and you are able to do all things. This is an important uh, uh, ayah in Surah Ali Imran. Number one, it shows here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's mentioning that he, for him is all the dominions, and he is the one who possesses. He has superiority of all affairs, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, number two, the individual knows that honor comes from Allah, izzah, comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, izzah can only come to the one who follows that which he revealed. The izzah is al-Islam. The izzah, the honor, it comes from al-Islam. It comes from implementing the book of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To izzu man tasha, to dhillu man tasha. Those who be debased are those who oppose his revelation. Those who oppose his commandments and his prohibitions, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tu'til mulka man tasha. He gives his dominion to whom he wills, number three. So therefore, one has to have tawadu. One has to have humility. So the one who believes with yaqeen and certainty in that sifatul mulk for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows that if somebody has any type of wealth or status, Allah gave it to him. So therefore, he's not hasid. So therefore, it repels the evil feeling of hasad, jealousy, destructive jealousy. Because the mulk is for whom? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then when the individual has that hasad, then therefore they are contesting with whom? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're showing enmity to whom? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huh? They're disrespecting whom? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلِ اللَّهُمَ مَالِكُ الْمُلْكِ تُؤْتِ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ You give from your dominion to whom you will. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Regarding the point number five in this one, yes? This is just for this verse, by the way. Benefit from this verse. Point number five, the ulama, some of the ulama of the salaf have said that mulk is nabuwa. And you give 
prophethood to whom he, you will, Nabuwa. And you choose from, who, from your creation that you give this prophethood. And therefore, the one who opposes the message of the messengers, Yudhil, or Yudhal, is the one that will be debased. And the one that follows the call and the da'wah of the messengers, Allah gives them honor and raises them. Others from the ulama have said, which is the correct, the strongest understanding that is general, not just mulk here, not just nabuwa, any, everything. Everything is incorporated that, that is uh, considered here the mulk that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to. Now, lahu mulku wa lahu alhamd. So that's all of this, my dear beloved brothers, is point number one. But within point number one, we spoke about the verse in Surah Al-Imran, just to get some benefits from that amazing verse regarding Sifat al-Mulk. Point number two is that as the Imam al-Sa'di, ta'ala, for those who are acquainted with the works of uh, Imam Abdurrahman al-Sa'di, ta'ala, and he, when he authors his book, when he uh, uh, does his, his work, he follows the methodology of the Qur'an. He follows the methodology of the Qur'an. And from that here, he's combined lahul mulk wa ish walhamd. For him is mulk and alhamd. Because they are mutalazimatan. These two, meaning the mulk, the dominions, for Allah is the possessor of all dominions, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the mulk, and for him is all praise. This, these two, one is a, is, is a necessity of the other. One is a necessity of the other, which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in Surah Tagabun, lahu mulk wa lahu alhamd, wa ala kulli shayin madha qadir. Lahu mulk wa lahu alhamd. So he's following the, 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 the alfaz and the tartib of the Quran in, in this line of poetry. For, for him, Allah, is al-mulk, the dominions, walhamd, and praise, because he's the one who possesses all things. So it necessitates that he's the one that has the complete praise. And Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala has mentioned that this al is al al-istighraq. This al in alhamd is al al-istighraq, meaning all type of Muhammad, all types of praise, absolute praise is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? From those reasons, lahu madha? Al-mulk. Lahu al-mulk. Naam. Wa hikmatuhu al-udma biha al-khalqu Tashhadu. Point number three, and that is that Al-Imam uh, Abdurrahman al-Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala <coughs> goes on to mention the hikmah, the sifat al-hikmah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wisdom. And that which, that sifa comes from the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-hakim, the all-wise. Wa huwa al-azizu al-hakim. And he is the almighty and all wise, meaning that all wise, a.e., he subhanahu wa ta'ala, who al ladhi yada'u al ashia'a fi mawadi'iha. Who al ladhi yada'u al ashia'a fi mawadi'iha. He, Allah, is the one who puts every single, not just puts things, every single thing, al ashia'a. And that al again is al istighraq. He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the one that puts everything in its place. And that is the meaning of the al-hakim, that he's the all-wise. So if you're in, the pla- in, a, in a place of richness, or you have wealth, it's from the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you are destitute, it's from the hikmah and the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one who has the iman in the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has raha. He has tranquility. That everything that he's going through is from the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he implements a sabr. He implements the ibadah of patience. Now, when the individual has this iman in the name of Allah al-Hakim, the all-wise, when he goes through trials, he, go, he turns to ibadah. He turns to worship. And that's the ibadah of sabr. And when he has wealth or health, good health, 
or prosperity. And he has this iman and belief in the name of Allah Al-Hakim. His result, or the result of this iman, he turns to ibadah again of a shukr, of gratitude. So the abd is between shukr wa sabr. Barakallahu fikum. And he comes down to the meat, to the, the iman in the, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Hakim, wa huwa al-Aziz al-Ahkim. Ay yada'u al-Ashya'a fi muwadi'aha. There is no contradiction, there is no opposing his decree and his wisdom, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And point number four, regarding al-hikmah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives the hikmah and wisdom to whom he wills. He gives hikmah, wisdom, yu'ti al-hikmata man yasha, wa man yu'ti al-hikmata faqad uti khayran kathira. And that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and he gives wisdom to whomever he wills. And whoever has received wisdom has indeed been given something great. Something that is mightily good. How do we benefit from this verse? And that is that the person who has this wisdom and putting things in its right place, it necessitates ilm. The one that is hakim, he has ilm. So therefore encourages one to seek knowledge with ikhlas, to seek knowledge with sincerity. Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him hikmah. Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him fiqh fid deen. Man yurid illahu bihi khayran, kama qara al-rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, Whomsoever Allah wants good for, and this is khayran kathira here. Whoever Allah wants good for, he gives him fiqh in the deen. And the person will have hikmah, the person will have wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent his messengers with wisdom. He revealed his book with wisdom. He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is Al-Hakim. And it's one of the most important names of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we can implement in our lives. How can we implement the name of Al-Hakim in our lives? Ya ibadallah, ya ahibba, my beloved brothers. How can we implement Al-Hakim in our lives? Please, sir. By putting things in the correct place without any negligence and without any extremism. Having balance. Anyway. To seek knowledge. Ahsent. To seek knowledge from what? What's al hikmah? Sa'id, it's al hikmah. Ainam. Putting things in its right place. And hikmah is a sunnah. Allah mentions that hikmah is what? Sunnah. So therefore the one who believes in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Hakim, he follows the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he studies the sunnah, he studies the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when the one who implements the name, the name of Allah al-Hakim, he treats his wife with wisdom. He treats his children with wisdom. She treats her husband with wisdom. She knows if she says, A, Alif, or Ba, is going to cause problem in the household. So she uses wisdom and, and uses jeem. She knows that this will cause a nice environment and feeling in the household. She uses wisdom to put it in the right place so khair can come from it. And likewise the husband. And likewise the father to his son. He uses wisdom. Another example is this. You have the time of, it's time, it's time for Salat al-Fajr. It's time for Salat al-Fajr. And you wake up and you go to your son and you say to your son at the time of Salat al-Fajr, yesterday 
you did this, and you start giving them a hounding. Nusa. Not beating him, but verbal onslaught. Nusa. Half an hour pounding him. And it's a time for fajr. Is that from hikmah? Why not? Yeah, just combine it and just hold him tightly and drag him. Huh? Uh, for that time, you haven't put the affair in the right place. There you are. He may associate fajr with something negative. And that which is more important now is what? Fajr. So focus on him going to fajr, praising the masjid. And, he, and again, he goes to salah with khushur. So you haven't burdened him with something that's going to be hefty on him when he goes to pray in front of his Lord. And then when he comes back from Salah, you smile because he went to the masjid. Then you can give him what you want to give him. <laughs> so that's from the using wisdom, using Hikmah, and all of this, ikhwan, is muta'alliq bi al-iman bi asma'i wa asifah. It's connected to iman in the names of Allah and attributes, ikhwan. And don't ever listen to anybody that tells you that tawheed is theoretical. That tawheed is... One's getting fed up and tired of tawheed. Tawheed is in every aspect of our lives, ikhwan. The only reason that we don't know how that aspect is connected to tawheed is our weakness as it relates to the knowledge of a tawheed. Every single thing you do, every haraka, every movement, every speech has a alaqa with tawheed, and it should do. And from them is al hikmah, wisdom in your affairs. Amen. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Wa nashhadu anna Allah yanzilu fi duja كما قاله المبعوث بالحق أحمد ونشهد أن and we bear witness that Allah descends in the darkness of the of the last third of the night as stated by the one who was sent with the truth, Ahmed, i.e. Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam. <coughs> the Imam, Abdurrahman al-Sa'idi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions now that from the sifat of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala is al-nuzul. From the attributes of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is Allah descending. Is Allah descending. Point number one, and that is that this is from his sifat al fi'liya. This is from his sifat al fi'liya. These are from those attributes that he does when he wills, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's from his actions, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's point number one. Yanzilu Rabbuna Tabaraka ismuhu kulla laylatin. And this is why it's from the sifat al fi'liya. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he descends every night. So because it's for a specific time, this is from the sifat al-fi'liya. Wadih? Aynam. So in this hadith, which I just alluded to, is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. And Muslim and the Muslim of Imam Ahmed and Abu Huerta radiallahu an. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, yanzilu rabbuna tabarak asmuhu kulla laylatin hina yabqa thuluth al-layl al-akhir. And that is that our Lord, he descends every night. Yani for the last part of the night. And in the line of poetry that Imam al-Sidi rahimahullah ta'ala mentions, so if we look in the Arabic, وَنَشْهَدُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ yanzilu fi duja duja yani suwad al-layl. Al-Duja, Sawad, Al-Layl. Al-Duja in Arabic means dark. So he's used here to mean when it's at the, the darkness of the night. The darkness of the night. And in this hadith, Hina Yabqa, Thulath Al-Layl. 
الاخير و is the third last third of the night the last third of the night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he descends الى السماء الدنيا to the lowest heaven فيقول and he says من يدعوني and he says subhanahu wa ta'ala who will, who calls unto me فاستجيب له and i will answer him and his supplication man yasaluni fa u'tiya who is asking me so i can give to him man yastaghfiruni man yastaghfiruni fa aghfir lahu who is seeking forgiveness from me so i can and i will forgive him hatta yatlu al fajr al fajr until fajr comes so in this hadith, which is in Bukhari and Muslim, authentic narration, number one is affirmation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends in that which is befitting to his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, and that is that we believe this with biduni kaif, takif. We believe this and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed informed us. He's told us that he descends. In this hadith, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that he descends, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we do not ask how. We have not been commanded in any way, form or fashion, encouraged in any form or fashion to ask how. And we have a principle from the athar of Al-Imam Malik, rahimahullahu ta'ala, regarding another uh, sifat al fi'li of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's istiwa where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaqul ar-rahmanu ala al-arsh istawa the most merciful rose above his throne and al-imam malik rahimahullahu ta'ala was in a a, 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 a a circle of knowledge and somebody asked the question kayf istawa how does he rise above his throne and this angered Imam Malik because he had jealousy for the deen. He had ghira for the religion. It angered him. And he said, Al-istiwa ma'lumun. Al-istiwa ma'lumun. That rising is known in the Arabic language. Wa kayf majhulun. And how the mahiyah how is unknown, meaning Allah didn't reveal that to us. Was su'alu anhu bid'atun. And asking how is an innovation, because none of the Sahaba did it, and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't do it. Qif haythu ma waqafa al qawm. Stop where the people stopped. Stop where the Sahaba stopped. They didn't ask how. Allah did not tell us to. It's an innovation to ask how. I don't see you except that you're a person of innovation. He kicked him out of masjid. This is a principle. Number three. For all of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from them is a nuzul. And that is, we believe in that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us and that which the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has informed us without negating it, without changing its meaning to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not reveal and without asking how. So here the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, يَنزُلُ رَبُّنَا تَبَارَكُ أَسْمُهُ That our Lord, he, uh, he descends every night. That's point number two, sir, regarding the verse, yes? Point number three is the, the, this hadith encourages us to stand up in Qiyam al-Layl. This hadith encourages us to stand up in the third part of the night and be from those who are praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala qadr istata'ah depending on our ability and remember to take the fursa and to take the opportunity to call on to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah asks, من يدعوني, who's, ask, who's calling? We have to be from those who are calling, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَأَسْتَجِيبَ لَهُ له. so This is from the times and the period of, of the istijaba, the ijaba to dua, 
that the dua and the supplications are accepted. We have to take this every night. How merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Every night. Who's the one that is asking so I can give him every night? Who's the one that's seeking forgiveness so I can forgive him every night? And what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the hadith al-Qudsi? إِنَّكُمْ مَاذَا تُخْتِئُونَ بِاللَّيْلِ nahar. You all err, err and sin in the night and day. فَاسْتَغْفِرُونِ أَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ So seek forgiveness from him subhanahu wa ta'ala. He'll forgive you every night. We have this opportunity, no doubt, forgiveness and seeking forgiveness is throughout the day. As the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنِّي لَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ أَكْثَرْ مِنْ مِئَةْ مَرَّةٍ that I seek forgiveness from Allah every day. This is the messenger of Allah. I seek forgiveness from Allah every day or every uh, uh, night in the narration, every day and night, huh? more than a hundred times. And this is Khairul Bashar, the best of man, Khalilullah, Kalimullah, Rasulullah, Khatim Nabi, in the seal of the prophets, the best of creation. So now it is here in East London, UK, 6.45. Have we even asked forgiveness from Allah once or twice? Will we plan our nights like we plan our days so we can be up in the third latter part of the night and seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and implement this tadarrah turning to him for our needs instead of complaining in the day this is the fruits of aqidah this is from the fruits of studying the Aqidah. The correct belief. So this is a refutation and this is point number ish. Huh? Four. It's a refutation against the Mubtadi'a that says studying Aqidah hardens the heart. How can believing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he has Revealed in the sunnah that he descends in the last part of the night, asking one to seek forgiveness, asking one to call unto him. How can that harden the heart? That which hardens the heart is negating this sifa. That which hardens the heart is rejecting anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in its Quran, the book, and in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a proof here from the statement of the Imam Rahimullah Ta'ala. We know that Allah Like the one who was sent with the truth. A Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ahmed, one of his names. Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. The people of Bida, the next point, the people of Bida. They negated this sifa from them, the Ashairah, the Mu'tazila, the Jahmi, the, all, the, all the Nufa, all of those from the negators, from the people of Bida, the Jahmiya, the Mu'tazila, the Kulabiya, the Maturidiya, and the Ashairah, they negated the Nuzul. Because it's from, it's from the Sifat Allah, Sifat Allah al Fi'liya, it's from his. Uh, Attributes, and they say that it, it's teshbi. Uh, it resembles the creation. Uh, how can we refute this, here, Shabab? When they say that it resembles the creation, how can we refute this? Refute the Mu'tazila, refute the Jahmiya, 
and refute all of them. How do you do this? Ya Ahibba, ah, Sheikh Abdul Rahman. Laysa kamithlihi shay, simple verse. Ahsent. Laysa kamithlihi shay. No, none is comparable to Allah. But who is Samir al But we affirm that he hears and he sees it. All hearing, all seeing. So we affirm that he descends in the last third of the night. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to give you a little a fight, inshallah, for those who, inshallah, can go back to Sharh ibn Aqil of al Fiyah. Sharh ibn Aqil is a Sharh of al Fiyah ibn Malik dealing with the morphology, linguistics of the Arabic language. In that book, There is one of the uh, deviants of uh, the Ashaira. Because as they negate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends, they negate that he comes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And your Lord comes and the angels. Okay? So how do they negate this? This is, I'm going to give you an example of how the people of Bid'ah try to play with their philosophy, long-winded philosophy. So I'm going to try and break this down in step by step. In the Shah of Ibn Aqil, uh, there's a chapter pertaining to um, uh, when you can, because in Arabic, like in English, English is a subject-verb language, correct? Yes or no? Yeah, subject verb, SV language, English, or SVO, subject verb object. The Arabic language, we have a subject which is called a fa'il. So the subject can either be a fa'il or mubtada. Tayyib? As for the fa'il, generally, if it is an active sentence, the fa'il, which is the dua, needs to be mentioned, yes or no? Huh? Who can give me an example where there's a fa'il in a sentence? Who can give me an example in Arabic where there's a fa'il in a sentence? Ja'a. Ja'a Zubair. Hey now. Ni'mah. So Zubair is the fa'il. He's the one that is coming, right? Okay. So what they say, that in the Arabic language, you can delete the fa'il. You can delete the fa'il. You can delete the dua. But there are certain times when you can do that. And when you can do that, it's when it is mudaf ilay. So if it's in its origin, it's mudaf ilay. Uh, mudaf ilay, what's that? No, there was a word I found that the English word for mudaf ilay. Because of. Uh, no. Uh, preposition and of. Yes or no? Yeah, book of Allah. Yes or no? Yeah? Kitabullah, meaning possessor. Allah is Allah's book, yes? So it's called in, in English uh, preposition with of. Okay? So when it's in that situation, they say that you can take away the, for example, let's say you've got a siyara to Abdullah. Siyara to Abdullah. Who's the, uh, I can delete uh, siyara. I can delete ish? Siyara, methalen. So then it's Abdullah. So that's me deleting the mudaf. Ilay, okay? So they say that in this verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ وَالْمَلَكُ صَفَّ صَفَّ They say the, the fa'il is mahdhuf. وَجَاءَ أَمْرُ رَبِّك Lahatum? So they say, instead of the verse where Allah says, and your Lord comes, they say, no, this is an example where the, the actual one that comes is what? Is what? Hidden. Because we're going to make it be mudaf to Allah's name. Fimtum. So they say that which is the actual one that came is that word that is deleted. So instead of وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ وَالْمَلَكُ صَفَّ They say وَجَاءَ huh? أَمْرُ So your Lord's affair came. Fimt? That's how they play did you catch that? 
Huh? Who can repeat that for me? Yeah, let me let me let me just relax a little bit. Who can who can repeat that for me? Affair. And they use that as a proof that in a linguistic language, the doer can be deleted. Allah deleted it the same way, Yathan Billah. Shiftum? This is philosopher. This is philosophy. Okay? And this is why uh, studying Arabic is not sufficient. Studying Arabic is not sufficient. One has to study Arabic and the ulum of the deen, the sciences of the religion. And likewise, when you're defining anything in Arabic, that's just the beginning. Logatan. We have to have the definition according to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger. For example, ad-du'a, uh, as-salah. As-salah. What is as-salah linguistically? Du'a. So somebody says, oh, I'm going to do salah. Du'a. Okay. Well, what I'll do is I'll just raise my hands and I've done my salah. Because he's followed the linguistic meaning. Sahola. But what do we say? We understand what salah means by what? Going back to where? Ma iftata habi, a takbir, wa iftata mabi, a tasim, that which begins with Allahu Akbar, which is in the sunnah of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and ends with assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. So now we know the definition of salah according to Quran and Sunnah. Which is why Sheikh Mukbil, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala, the muhaddith, the alama, he said it's sufficient that you do qatr nada. Don't go too deep into the, the linguistic uh, affairs because a lot of the philosophers, they went into extreme. They went into, take that which you need. Take that which you need that helps you understand the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Have I gone too deep? Huh? Malish. Taib. Uh... Goes back to Ibn Aqil, and, and uh, I remember in the Jamia, Allah must stand, this uh, individual said, It's just Arabic. I said, It's just Arabic. This is Asha'ira. This is what? Asha'ira, negating Allah's sifat. Naam. Let's continue. Yalla. Qad rahimahullah ta'ala, wa nashhadu anna Allah arsala ruslahu. بآياته للخلق تهدي وترشد وفاضل بين الرسل والخلق كلهم بحكمته جل العظيم الموحد فأفضل خلق الله في الأرض والسماء نبي الهدى والعالمين محمد وخص له الرحمن أصل And we attest that Allah sent his messenger with his revelation to creation. He guided and directed and he favored some of the messengers and the creation over others. Of all of them, by his wisdom, exalted, great majesty, the one alone who is worshipped. Thus, the best of the creation of Allah in the earth and the heavens, the prophet of guidance sent to mankind and jinn, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Tayyib, the Shaykh, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala, point number one, he now focuses on uh, a pillar from the pillars of Iman, and that is Iman in the messengers. Iman in the messengers. Alayhi wa sallatu wa sallam, wa nashhadu anna Allah arsala ruslahu. Arsala ruslahu, yani rusulahu. It's only mentioned Ruslahu because of the line of poetry that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we testify that Allah has sent his messenger. So this is from the, uh, the, the points as it relates to the obligation of having iman and believing in the messengers, alayhi salatu wasalam. Point number two, and that is that we have a definition of the messenger. What's the definition of a messenger and what's the definition of a prophet? What's the def- you can put a subtitle for number two. What's the definition of a messenger? <clears throat> and what's the definition of a prophet? And are they synonymous? Meaning, do, do they have the same meaning? The ulama, they differ. The correct opinion is that they are different. They have t- t- two different definitions. As for a rasul, I'm going to mention the definition of a rasul, which is taken from the kalam of Ahlul Aim, like Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, and others. 
And that is man arsal Allahu or man ursila man ursila ila qawmin kafaru istahaqu al-adhab liyunzar liyunzirahum wa yad'uhum man arsala or ursila ila qawmin kafaru istahaqu al-adhab liyunzirahum wa yad'uhum and that is that the messenger is the one that was sent to a people. And if we can focus, my dear beloved brother, so we can see the difference between a messenger and a prophet. The messenger is the one that was sent to a people who disbelieved. So he, they disbelieved. And that disbelief causes them to deserve a punishment. So he warns them and he calls them to the worship of Allah alone. That's the definition of a messenger. Uh, so he, he was sent to whom? Who was he sent to? The messenger. Huh? Qawmin? Kafaru. They've disbelieved. In Allah and that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. So he was sent to call them to believe in Allah and that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. As for the prophet... Man ursila, again, he sent. So linguistically, a prophet is a messenger. Man ursila ila qawmin mu'mineen. Man ursila ila qawmin mu'mineen. Yu'allimuhum ma kutiba alayhim. And that is, the, the prophet is the one that has been sent to a people who believed. So they believed, but they became weak. They became negligent. So he cultivates them and wakes them up to implement that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded them to do. So the prophet, the one that's a prophet, he sent to a people who believed. As for the messenger, he sent to a people who disbelieved. So in reality, every messenger is a prophet. But not every prophet is a messenger. This is the correct opinion. And another proof to show this in the hadith of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is when the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, inna al-ulama warathatul anbiya. He said, inna al-ulama warathatul anbiya. That verily the scholars are the inheritors of the prophets. He didn't say the messengers. Because they didn't come with something new. They didn't come... Uh, the, 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 the ulama are there to wake the people up. And some of the ulama say that they, didn't, they weren't sent to a people... Um, uh, with, they, didn't, they weren't sent with something new. So that's why some of the definitions they say that the messenger has come with so, uh, 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 a revelation that is new. A revelation that is new. But I didn't mention that because there is... Uh, uh, some uh, discrepancies in that regard plus some of that definition but generally this hadith verily the scholars are the inheritors of the prophets because the prophets they didn't come with anything new and they're there to cultivate so that's why the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wa said in al ulama warathatul anbiya he didn't say al mursaleen so that's one of the proofs that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah ta'ala mentions to show the difference between a messenger and a prophet. And to my... Point number three. And that is that the messengers, alayhi salatu wasalam, are indeed the best of creation. اِخْتَصَّهُمُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ مِنْ وَحِهِ Allah chose them specifically for his revelation. So the Prophet is revealed to and also the Messenger is revealed to. مِنْ أَوَّلِهِمْ نُوحٍ عَلَيْهِ سَلَاتُ وَسَلَامِ إِلَىٰ آخِرِهِ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ From Nuh عَلَيْهِ سَلَاتُ وَسَلَامْ Adam and Nuh عَلَيْهِ سَلَاتُ وَسَلَامْ To the uh, last of them and that is Muhammad uh, ibn Abdullah صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ Point number four and that is that some of the prophets are more virtuous than other prophets. And I believe he mentions that in a line of poetry. What does he say? 
وفاضل بين الرسل والخلق كلهم وفاضل and he is deemed that some messengers are better than other messengers more virtuous than other messengers تلك الرسل فضلنا بعضهم على بعض these are the messengers تلك الرسل these are the messengers that we have favored some over others and no doubt the best of them is Muhammad ibn Abdullah Rasulullah Khatim Nabiyyin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best after him uh, including the, the Ulul Azam in fact the best of the prophets are the Ulul Azam and they are the prophets who had strong resolve Ulul Azam yani they had strong resolve like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said wa idha akhadna min an-nabiyyin mithaqahum wa minka wa min nuhim wa ibrahim wa musa wa isa ibn maryam Allah mentions all of the Ulul Azam the the most virtuous prophets in surah al-ahzab verse number 7 where he said wa id akhadna min an-nabiyyin and we have taken from the prophets a covenant and from you muhammad number 1 and nuh number 2 and ibrahim number 3 and musa number 4 and Isa ibn Maryam, number five. These are the most virtuous um, the most virtuous prophets, messengers. And the most virtuous of them is Muhammad ibn Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Some benefits regarding this verse in Surah Al-Hazab, verse number seven. Number one, and that is that the prophets had the same call. It's a proof that the da'wah and the call of the prophets were in unison. They were all calling to Tawheed. وَلَقَدَ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ رَسُولًا أَنِ اِبْدُوا اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُوا الطَّاغُوتِ You're sent to every uh, nation, a messenger telling them to worship Allah alone and stay away from false deities. Here, وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ And as we've taken from all of the prophets, all of the prophets, this covenant, and that covenant is to fulfill that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered for them to call to. And the number one call is the call to Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then after that, point number two, Allah mentioned prophets specifically. This shows the virtue. In the beginning, he mentioned the prophets generally. And we have t- taken from all of the prophets, the covenant, you need to fulfill that which Allah has commanded them to do in calling to Tawheed, in calling to worshipping Allah alone. And then afterwards, Allah specified the most virtue from, virtuous from the prophets. And that is whom? Who are the most virtuous? Ah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nuh. Ibrahim. Musa. Isa ibn Maryam. This is Ulul Azam. Point number three regarding this is that we benefit from the Qisas of the Anbiya. And it's important that we busy ourselves in studying the stories of the Prophets. And this is from the fruits of Al Iman bin Rusul and having Iman in the messengers and the Prophets. It's that we study their Qisas. We study their Qisas and their stories in the Qur'an, and some that are mentioned in the Sunnah, the authentic Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And from that which you can take from the lives of the Prophets is the sabr, their patience. Their patience in adversity in which all of the Prophets they went through. Their adversity in calling to Tawheed, the harm that they received from their people, but they still fulfill that mithaq. They still fulfill that covenant that Allah has commanded them with. وَاصْبِرْ كَمَا صَبَرَ أُولِ الْعَزْمِ مِنَ الرُّسُلِ As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in Surah Al-Hakaf, and be patient, be patient as those from the messengers that had so, uh, a strong resolve were patient. So we learn from the patience of the prophets. So in Ramadan, Barakallahu feekum, when we are uh, uh, the month of the Qur'an, we should be reading the Qur'an every month, but we read more in the month of Ramadan, we focus on 
the understanding that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, has revealed. And from that is the qisas, the stories of the prophets. So it's beneficial that the person who's reading the Quran, and if you know Arabic, read the tafsir. Go to the tafsir, read the Quran, uh, a Jews, your Jews or your Hizb or whichever, in the morning, for example, and then in the evening or what have you, you read the tafsir of what you've read. Or you read also the Qisas al Anbiya, the stories of the Prophets, by Abdurrahman al Sidli, and also Ibn Kathir. So we can get benefits from uh, these amazing Qisas and stories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. The next thing I want to mention is a statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Kulun Amana billahi wa malaikati wa kutubihi wa rusuli. La nu farrik bayna ahdim min rusuli. Wa qalu sami'na wa ata'na ghufrana ka rabbana wa ilayka al musir. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Baqarah, Kulun, all of you believe in Allah and his angels and his books and his messengers. Do not distinguish between any of his messengers. Just say, we hear and we obey, forgive us, our Lord, to you is our end. Allah says, Allah says in this verse in Surah Baqarah, the, the, the end of Surah Baqarah, that we do not, um, no, it's not the end of Surah, the end of the first Jews in Surah Baqarah, that we do not make a distinguish, the, the distinction between the messengers. What does that mean? Does that mean that we have to have Iman in all of them? Or does that mean that we don't say one is more virtuous than the other? Who can tell me? Mm. Tafriq in what? Ascent. So the meaning of his here, la nufarriq bayna ahadim min rusul. This is from the important principles in the belief in the messengers is that you believe in all of them equally. You believe in all of them equally. However, tilka rusulu fadal nabadum ala ba'd. However, Allah has mentioned in another verse, these are the messengers. Some are more superior than others. So we say there are some uh, messengers that are more superior than other messengers, but we believe in all of them equally. We believe in all of them equally now. Father. Father. <coughs> أقاموا الهدى والدين حق والدين حقا ومهد فحب جميع الآل والصحب عندنا معاشر أهل الحق فرض مؤكد أنا الرحمن the extremely merciful selected for him his companions they established the guidance and the religion in truth and paved the way so love for all his family and companions with us is the people of truth. And emphasize an obligation. So here, after mentioning the belief in the messengers, alayhi salatu wasalam, he now mentions the aqidah of Ahl sunnati wal jama'ah as it relates to the companions of the messenger of Allah, the seal of the prophets, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Point number one. In this Barakallahu Fikum, these two lines of poetry, it's encouraging us to love the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to give them their rights as it relates to that love. And not to treat them in, in uh, with uh, be extreme with them, meaning that we do not use hikmah. We put them in their rightful place. The place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed the companions and their virtues in the Quran. And likewise the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We do not fall into ghulu. We do not fall into extremism. And we don't fall into harsh disparagement of the companions radiyallahu ta'ala anhum. But rather we remain silent as it relates to their errors and we mention them in good in a position to the rawafid 
and others from the people of Bid'ah. That's point number one. Point number two, Sheikh, Sheikh Al-Alama Zayd Al-Madkhali, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he mentions four reasons why we should love the companions. Four reasons that shows the necessity and the, the, and the obligation of loving the companions. Four reasons. Number one, لِأَنَّهُمْ أَهْلُ iman. بِمَا يَجِبُ الْإِيمَانُ بِهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُ يُحِبُ الْمُؤْمِنُ And this is the origin that you love the believers and they are from the believers. So min asl, we love the companions because they are believers. They believe in Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. They're from Ahl al-Iman and it's obligatory to have love for them as one will have love for all of his brothers and sisters from the believers except that the level of love we have for the companions is more. Number two, we love them due to their companionship of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Li suhbatihim li rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ihsanuhum fiha. And we must treat them well and love them for their companionship with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number three, لِمَا قَامُوا بِهِ مِنَ الْجِهَارِ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ لِإِعْلَاءِ كَلِمَةِ اللَّهِ بِلَا رِئَاءٍ وَلَا سُمْعَةٍ وَلَا طَمْعٍ فِي أَمْوَالِ And that is that we love the companions for their efforts in striving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's word of tawheed, his deen superior. And they did this without riya, without showing off or seeking fame, or seeking any portion of the dunya. They did this for the kalima of Allah to be uliya, for the words of Allah and the statement of Allah to be superior. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaqulu alladhi jaa'a bi sidqi wa saddaqa bi. Alladhi jaa'a bi sidqi wa saddaqa bi. Allah says, and the one who came with the truth and he believed in it. The one who came with the truth and he believed in it. In this verse, Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, الَّذِي جَاءَ بِالصِّدْقِ The one who came with the truth was the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَصَدَّقَ بِهِ And the one who believed in it was Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. So we love the Sahaba for the ikhlas that they had in calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is why the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Let us subbu ashabi. Let us subbu ashabi. Do not curse or speak ill of my companions. For law anna ahadukum anfaqa mithla uhudin dhahaba. If any of you was to give in charity the magnitude of Mount Uhud, مَا بَلَغَ مُدَّهُ أَحَدِهِمْ وَلَا نَصِيفَهُ That you wouldn't even reach a handful of what they have done, or even half. Meaning that if you were to even give in charity the size of Mount Uhud. Who's been to Medina? Have you seen Uhud, ya shabab? Ah, Look how far Uhud stretches in Medina, around the Da'iri. You could give all of that in gold. In charity, you would not even come close to half a handful of what they've done because of their ikhlas. Because of their sincerity, not seeking fame, and because of their superiority, barakallahu feekum. So from that, this is the reasons why we love the companions, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum. Number four, uh, before that, what's number one? Huh? We love them because they believe in Allah, they're from Ahl Iman. Number two? Hmm? They had the suhbah. The companionship of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, 
regarding that second point, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Um hadhi al-abarra hadhi al-umma. Um abarra abarra hadhi al-umma ikhtarahum Allah li suhbati rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is amazing. That the companions had the purest of hearts in this ummah. They had the cleanest hearts in this ummah. Allah chose them to be companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's one of the reasons why we love them. Number three. jihad. That which they, the effort that they made in striving for the part in the path of Allah, not seeking fame, and not seeking wealth, and not seeking stardom. With sincerity, we love them for that. And number four, لِأَنَّهُمْ هُمُ الَّذِينَ نَقَلُوا لَنَا الْعِلْمِ لِأَنَّهُمْ هُمُ الَّذِينَ نَقَلُوا لَنَا الْعِلْمِ طيب, your salah, salam. your ibadah, your worship, your zakat, your hajj, your umrah, your business transaction that is halal, where does it come from? The Quran and the Sunnah. Tayyib. Who were the transmitters of the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The Sahaba. The companions. So the Rafadi, the, 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 the Khariji that prays and they're cursing some of the companions radiyallahu ta'ala anhum this shows Adam al-Shukr. It shows lack of gratitude. How long do we have before Aisha? Five minutes or now? Five minutes. Lack of gratitude. So the one who has and implements his gratitude for the efforts that the companions have made in transmitting the knowledge, they love the companions for that. Yes, alunaka anil ahilla. We're going to fast in the month of Ramadan. In a couple of weeks. In the, in the Quran, Allah says, and they ask you regarding the moon, the crescent. And then the ahkam came. Yes, alunaka madha yunfiqoon. They ask you what should they give in charity. Who's asking, ya shabab? The sahaba. And then the ahkam came. Yes, alunaka anil mahid. And they're asking you regarding ministration. What does the woman do? And then the ruling came. Barakallahu feekum. We have in the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. So now we have to love the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And these are four from the many reasons that we also, that we have to do so. The next point is that the companions have different levels. Just like the messengers, there are different levels in virtue as it relates to the companions. Uh, the messengers, there's also various levels of virtue as it relates to the companions of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَا يَسْتَوِي مِنْكُمْ مَنْ أَنْفَقَ مِنْ قَبْلِ الْفَاتْحِ وَقَاتَلُ أُولَٰئِكَ أَعْدَمُ دَرَجَةٍ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أَنْفَقُوا مِنْ بَعْدُ وَقَاتَلُوا كُلٌّ وَعَدَ اللَّهِ حُسْنًا Al-Husna, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Layas ta'wi minkum, that none of the, those of you, I mean the companions, who gave in charity before the conquest of Mecca and fought in the path of Allah before the conquest of Mecca, no, those who came after you are not comparable to you in virtue. Ula'ika a'dhamu darajatin, or darajatan. These ones are the ones who have a higher level, mightier level. These are the ones who have a higher station than those who gave in charity after. So the companions who gave in charity and fought in the path of Allah and embraced before the conquest of Mecca are more superior than those who were after. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَكُلَّنْ وَعَدُ اللَّهِ الْحُسْنَ But all of them, Allah has promised Jannah. All of the companions are in Jannah. All of the companions are in Jannah. And the most virtuous of the companions, رضي الله عنهم, is Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. It's Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. 
based upon various reasons. And from those is a statement of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. اِتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا وَلَوْ كُنْتُ مُتَّخِذًا مِنْ أُمَّةِ خَلِيلًا لَتَّخَذْتُ أَبَا بَكْنِ خَلِيلًا Where he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that Allah took Ibrahim as a Khalil, as a close ally, friend. And if I was to take from my Ummah a Khalil, a close friend, ally, I would take Abu Bakr. He specified the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, specified Abu Bakr. And when the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was in his deathbed, alayhi salatu wasalam, he ordered the companions, Muruhu bis Salah, to tell Abu Bakr to lead the people in prayer. And from this is a sign that he was the most virtuous of the companions, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. And Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha said that Abu Bakr, who a rajulun raqiq, who a rajulun raqiq, Aisha speaking about her father, radiyallahu anhuma, she said he's a man that is. He's soft-hearted that when he recites the Qur'an, he may disturb the people praying behind him due to his crying from the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's the most virtuous of the companions, radiyallahu ta'ala, and then the rest of the Khulfai al-Rashidin and Ashram al-Rashidin rashidin bil jannah However, the Rawafid and the Khawarij and the Deviant groups that we've studied many a time, they oppose these things that we've mentioned today by either... Uh, uh, disparaging the companions or deeming them from the disbelievers. And this is in opposition to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is why uh, uh, a large majority of the ulama make takfir of the Rawafid and the Khawarij. Naam. And with that, inshallah, we continue after Salah. We have a break. And um, ta'ala, we'll spend maybe 45 minutes uh, to an hour after Salat al Isha to finish off our de- uh, designated uh, abiyat, lines of poetry from Manhaj al-Haq, Lila Allama, Abdurrahman al-Sa'di, Rahimullah ta'ala, Wallahu a'lam, wa sallallahu wa sallam, wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammadin, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, hayakumullah.